Hi, it's me. Let's go shopping. <laughs> this is a third video in our little uh, Let's Go Shopping series, I guess it's becoming. Uh, I'll link that below. I'll make it into a playlist, actually. Uh, we previously went shopping specifically at occult um, bookstores, but I thought today we'd go to a used bookstore site that I really like. Uh, Thrift Books, you've probably heard of it if you buy a lot of books. <laughs> Um, you can also sell books to them, which is fun. Uh, but I thought we would explore here today, maybe pick up a couple titles. Oh, I'm not logged in. Let's log in. Um, I do like thrift books. Some years ago, they were bought by uh, Amazon. Um, so the prices have been raised. But as you can see, like right here, um, there are some books that are pretty affordable. Like $3? Come on. Uh, but sometimes they get a little crazy, especially magic books, I've noticed, because, you know, our books um, tend to be scarce and tend to come from smaller publishers, tend to be uh, produced in small quantities, so they can be harder to get your hands on. Oh, I have a book sitting in my cart. Let's see what it is. I don't remember. Oh! Okay, so this will be the theme of the video, which I guess you already know if you're watching it now. But I'm definitely going to get this, because um, I've never read this book by DJ Conway. Uh, but no, as I said, the, the theme of this video, let's, let's look only at authors from the 90s and early 2000s, because I am a millennial, and um, authors like DJ Conway are very nostalgic to me. Um, I mean, come on. <laughs> just the top row oh my gosh if you were a magical person at all from like 1996 to I would extend it as far as 2011 let's say you definitely know these books oh my gosh nostalgia alert let's see um, and DJ Conway I think is a woman, if I remember correctly. I find it interesting, um, you know, a lot of uh, baby boomer generation women who are authors, um, and previous generations, you know, a lot of the times they would either come up with a male pen name or they would abbreviate their name so that people wouldn't necessarily know that there are women because books by women, you know, might not be taken as serious, might not sell as well. So they kind of created these, these, uh, you know, literary uh, pen names to hide behind, which is like interesting, but also sad. And you would think that we're, you know, ahead of that now. But every time I think that we've passed a certain form of bigotry, it always seems to like come up again. So that's a little disheartening, but <laughs> anyway, back to this video. Uh, let's see, oh yeah, nostalgia. Flying Without a Broom. I've never read that by her. Astral Projection. That's interesting. That makes me think... Oh, here it is. That makes me think of this book, which I have recommended several times on the channel. Um, a Witch's Travel Guide to the uh, the Astral Realms. It's a very good book. Oh, I've also never read her book on mermaids. I keep saying her. I, I think DJ Conway's a woman. <laughs> let's see. Um, I might buy this, actually. Let's see. Let's get... I like to get the cheapest ones. I mean, because, you know, why not? Oh, only one left. Add to cart. Um, anywho, does it tell me? Are we using pronouns up in here anywhere? Oh, there's not like a about section of the author is there. I guess I could just look on my shelf. Anyway, that's, <laughs> that's not important right now. Uh, let's see. What else you got? So I did put this in my cart recently, I remember, because one, I'm, I'm nostalgic for, as I said, you know, authors from like the turn of the millennium because that's when I came of age but also um oh I like that but also lately I've been on a really big kick of reading anything about uh horned gods antlered gods green gods nature gods wild gods um I mean I kind of have always been interested in that since like day one of my my like magical initiation but lately i've just found myself really swing back into it in a heavy way 
Hmm, Celtic Rune, Elemental Magic. I used to be really into Elemental Magic in my late teens. That was all about it, especially water. I've just always loved water, being underwater. I love the sensation of being underwater. Uh, I mean, I am a, I'm a Cancer moon sign, so that tracks. Hmm. Oh, man. So I have a lot. Uh, well, not a lot, but I have several old... Llewellyn Almanacs and whenever it's a shame this is out of stock whenever I can find one I always buy them because I love having that window in time you know uh I really like magical almanacs I think they're a lot of fun and can sometimes have really great magic uh advice uh and spells in it that are overlooked I think by the masses because it's not presented just in a in a book it's presented uh, like in a, you know, like in a, a book that's more forward. This book requires you to dig and to have interest. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, she does also write, um, fiction, which a lot of magical authors do. Um, especially like romance, like, um, Ellen Dugan comes to mind and Deborah Blake. They both write, uh, like fantasy romance outside of their magical uh endeavors in nonfiction. um let's see so i put two books from dj conway in there let's check someone else out scott cunningham oh i i actually do think i have every single thing that scott cunningham has published so there's no need to look at those but i love scott cunningham silver raven wolf also think i have everything except for the teen magic book See, Raymond Buckland. Um, oh, Dane McCoy. Let's see. I do have that book, <clears throat> but with a different cover, an older cover. Astral Projection. Oh, Wit is a fun book. I would recommend that if you're wanting to read something, uh, again, nostalgic for like early 2000s Wicca, but a little different. Oh, an almanac. Like I said, I I love to get them uh, when I find them. Let's see. Oh my gosh, are we about to go down an almanac rabbit hole? Let's see. <coughs> I know I don't have 1999. That'll be exciting too. Oh my gosh, I might do a video on that if there is magic in it about Y2K or about just the coming of the millennium in general, I will definitely make a video about it. So there's 2013, which I do have. I have, see, I have a lot of these, the 2000s. Um, 98, 96. Oh, there's 2000 itself. Um, hmm, I, I have a lot of these. Um... Oh, I remember that one. Oh, that feels like so long ago. That was only 2011. I love the Llewellyn Almanacs. If you do, let me know below. Comment below if you also get the Llewellyn uh, Almanacs every year or occasionally. Just let me know. I'd be interested in knowing that. And it's fun, you know, to like get these older ones because you... You know, you kind of associate like, oh, what was I doing at that time? Where was I in 2003? For me, I was uh, in high school in 2003. Um, so I can place this firmly, you know, like, oh, yeah, this is what was happening when I was in high school with magic and the magical community. Um, oh, how exciting. Oh, my gosh. I really could fall down this rabbit hole of these. I love them so much. I really, really do. Like, so earnestly. But let's not get distracted. <laughs> let's um, let's venture back to uh, what we were doing before, which was uh, looking at Edane McCoy's books. Oh man. Okay, so this book is really nostalgic for me as well because I, so I made in a previous video which. I'll link it at the end of this video. I made a video about the dark spirits in folklore of Alabama. And you should check that video out 
give it some love. Uh, but in it, I talk about, you know, where I'm from in Alabama specifically, which is very, very small and a small town. And this book reminds me of right after I got out of high school, there was this little safe haven in my town for witches and pagans alike, all kinds of mag of magicians. Um, it was a hair salon called Lifetimes. And Lifetimes was ran by a woman whose name was Pat or Patricia. But if you knew her magically, you called her Amira. And rest in peace, Amira. I, I miss her so much. And, oh man, I miss her so much. And I would love for her to see, you know, the, the a really grown adult man that I am now. Um, man. But, uh, anywho, she lived a full life, though. She, she, you know, lived her life. Anyway, I don't want to get sad. <laughs> but, anyway, Amira ran a hair salon. And it was called Lifetimes, and it was all decorated very Egyptian, because that was Amira's thing. It was Egyptian magic. And secretly, in a little side area of the salon that was closed off with a little curtain, she sold herbs and candles and incense and stuff like that. And a lot of us would just gather there and meet there. And it was very incognito because she would have customers in there that weren't witches or magical uh, people. And we would just kind of be sitting there off to the side and... I remember there's this one woman who get her hair cut there a lot and she would always see us there and <laughs> she would say, Oh, you were always so busy. You always have so many people, you know, waiting to get your hair cut. And it's always the same people. And Amira would just laugh and like, ugh, she always called us her children or her babies, no matter what your age was compared to her. Um, but anyway, this book specifically reminds me of that because this book was new at the time and was being passed around between a lot of people in that shop. And oh, it's just a nice memory, you know? That's oh, good times. Let's see. Oh, Advanced Witchcraft. Also a very good book um, by Dane McCoy. Obviously, as the title says, it is for the advanced witch, not the beginner witch. And those kinds of books can be hard to find, so jump on this one if you can. I would recommend it, certainly. It reminds me of a story in the book, actually, where uh, Edane is talking about walking. I think she was walking home one night to her house, and she sees a guy trailing behind her. And she's like, I think this guy's following me. So she tries to lose him. So she, you know, makes a couple turns, takes a couple streets, like, you know, abruptly. To see if maybe it was just her, you know, being paranoid. Or if he's really following her, maybe she could lose him, you know, by doing that. But she doesn't lose him. So now she knows, you know, okay, this guy is stalking me. So she's getting closer to her house, but obviously she doesn't want to reveal where she lives. So she's, like, walking the block and the guy's, like, closing in the gap between them. Which is really scary, right? And she describes, it's been a while since I read it, but the way I remember it is she describes kind of entering like into this trance, like a walking trance, you know, because she's still moving. But she comes to this centered place while she's walking and envisions a hammer falling from the sky, like this giant hammer, and hitting that guy on the head. And when she does, she has this well up of emotion, right? Like she's pouring all of her intention into that hammer. And when she envisioned that and it hitting him on the head, he abruptly left from behind her and took another road, like another street, and just walked off, like abruptly. Uh, and so she includes that as like a, a kind of like a manner of advanced witchcraft, um, this, these creative visualizations as, for spellcasting. And I, I always remember that every time I go to pick that book up again. Uh, I remember that story because I think it's really interesting. Uh Oh, look at this. Mountain Magic. Love that. It's a shame it's out of stock. Man, okay, so I've seen this book before, but I've never read it. 
uh, I really, really want it. Um, really badly. But it's so hard to find. There's a collectible version for $96. I want it so bad. Ugh. But yes, Dane McCoy, she's, she, was, she was a um, really great author. Oh, Ted Andrews, that's another very popular author back in the day. You definitely know Ted Andrews as well. You know at least, yeah, here it is. You at least know Animal Speak, I assume. I mean, come on. That book was everywhere back in the day. Um, you know, I'm eager to know if you are a witch or other form of magician who has come up maybe in the just last five to ten years in magic, I'm eager to know what your magical journey has been like. Like, please share that down below. I would love to hear, like, because, you know, books formed so strongly who I am because that was the only way I could really get magical information. Uh, the internet was still new when I was coming up. So the internet was not what it is now. And you couldn't always find the information you wanted on the internet. Now the internet is like this endless well of knowledge in all areas. But it was not that way for a long time. So books were the way I learned magic. But I'm, I'm just wondering, did you learn magic just from the internet? That would be interesting to me. And what were your sources? Um, but yeah, share your magical journey down below. I would love to know that. Or if you make a video of it yourself, tag me, like, let me know. Hmm, Sacred Sounds. A lot of shamanic things, obviously, with Ted Andrews. The Occult Christ, that's interesting. Kabbalah, or, you know, Kabbalah, if we're American, right? We say Kabbalah. Oh, Psychometry. That was one of my very first uh, kind of means of understanding myself when I was a young teenager researching magic and the occult psychometry was one of those terms that I learned very early uh to associate with myself the art of shape-shifting I bet that's fun hmm you know I wonder I've seen a lot of stuff on Kabbalah lately or Kabbalah and I feel like maybe that's my spirit guides being like, maybe you should look into this more. I've got some books on it, but it's never been a huge interest of mine. I magic. Interesting. The magic of images. Feathered Omens. Love that. I remember that book. Hmm. The Nature Speak Oracle. Interesting. Hmm. I remember that book too. Wow. I worked at a bookstore um, for like five years in my early 20s. So a lot of these books, I remember seeing them on the shelf all the time and stocking them and ordering them from people. The Way of the Shaman. Hey, you know, okay, so I have this book. I feel like a lot of, again, a lot of like millennial witches probably are familiar with this book, but I don't know if I've ever read anything else by the author. So, oh, that's spooky. Hallucinogens and shamanism. Oh, you know what? I think I have uh, read this. Okay. Um, I think. Oh, of course, Carlos Castaneda. See, now we're going to go down this shaman rabbit hole. Scott Cunningham. Where's Deborah Blake? Let's look at her stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, how did she spell it? I think... Is it like that? Oh, oops. I think. Is it? Maybe. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So she does do a lot of fiction. Um, but she does do a lot of magic books, too. That's a really good book. Everyday Witchcraft. Oh, Goddess in the Details. Nostalgia. That's a good book. Uh, she has another book, too, called... Um, What's it called? Oh my gosh. Witchcraft on a shoestring or something like that. It's really, really good. It's all about being thrifty in your magic. Oh wow, I don't think I realized she wrote the Midsummer book in that series. That's wild. I have most of those. I don't have all of those. I've never seen a box set version. Ooh, love that. 
The witch's broom. Hmm. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. That's a very famous book from when I was um, a lot younger. Oh, there's Witchcraft on a Shoestring with a new cover. Hmm. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's look for... Who else would I want to check in on? Oh, let's look at Ellen Dugan. I mentioned her earlier. Okay, so this book right here is also nostalgic for me and triggers a lot of memories because um, the first coven I was in, I was introduced to this book, I think, is the way I was introduced to the book. I think it was through my first coven. And after my stint in that coven, I wound up forming my own uh, with a separate group of people. And I remember gifting this book to the, all the members in my circle. And we kind of just, I don't know why, but I, cause I mean, the book is good, but it's like, it was certainly not the crux of our magical practice, but I just remember that being a thing that I gifted people. Hmm. Oh, Timothy Roderick. Timothy Roderick follows me on Instagram along with a couple of other magical authors and that brings me so much joy <laughs> because these are authors that I, you know, the, the one authors that follow me are authors that I've loved for like so long. Like, oh my God. Oh my God. So the ones on Unfamiliar and Dark Moon Mysteries, come on. You cannot tell me that these are not good books. Like, golly, I really like Timothy Roderick. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Oh, let's look at uh, Christopher, uh, how do you spell his last name? Christopher uh, Penzak. Uh, also another nostalgic one for me. Uh, the very first book I ever bought with my own money was a Christopher Penzak book. It was, let's see if we can find it. It was this one, The Mystic Foundation. I've talked about it ad nauseum on this channel and in two papers that I have published that you can find on Amazon, by the way, along with my book, Goblin Grimoire. Uh, this was, this is a perfect, and I maintain this, I maintain this opinion. This is a perfect book um, as an intro to mysticism, religion at large. I'm telling you, that book is perfect. If you want to learn about all the world's major religions and a few niche ones, like this is it. I pr like for real, for real. I promise. It's really good. I can't recommend it enough. Um, so going back, I've noticed, you know, these got new covers a few years ago. These Temple of Witchcraft series. Each book is like inspired by a different element. And it, they're phenomenal. They're also giant. <laughs> so those are re that's really good prices for those books, by the way. Because those books are real thick. Um, they're phenomenal. He teaches courses based around them as well. I mean, it's a huge system that he's really created in the Temple of Witchcraft series. They're truly phenomenal and are probably his best work that he's ever produced. Um, they're great. This is an underrated book by him. Instant Magic, I think it's really underrated. It's really good. I would highly recommend it. The Witch's Shield. Um, there's a companion to that called The Witch's Heart, which is really good. Oh, and the, uh, I think The Witch's Coin. That's a good book as well. Oh, City Witchcraft is very good. Hmm. Ascension Magic. You know, I've never been one for Ascension Magic. Uh, maybe one day I'll get into it. Okay, another great, great resource if you are really young and just getting into magic. Sons of the Goddess. It, whether you're Wiccan or not. I'm not Wiccan. Um, but I still like this book. It, this book is really, really a great intro for you. Um, particularly if you are... 
a queer guy. Um, Christopher Pinzak is queer. I'm queer. And those books, I mean, this book, I mean, all of these books are great, but this book is a really great resource for you starting out. Along with another book of his um, called Gay, there it is, Gay Witchcraft, which I know is getting a new printing soon. And I'm eager to see how he updates it because that book has not been updated since it's probably published in like 2000 and I don't know, maybe 2003 or two or something. So I'm excited to see how he expands on it. I hope he expands on it and it's not just a pure reprint, but it's a great book. Again, that's another one of those books that immediately takes me back to a place of when I bought it and when I read it. Do you know what I mean? It's like a, it serves as like an anchor to a moment in time in my life. Um, this is a good book as well. Um, I used this book in college, actually, um, in my comparative religion class. Um, I think it's interesting that they chose Merlin to be like the figurehead for paganism and magic uh, against, you know, Christ and Buddha. I just found that interesting. I also find it interesting that they use the Dharma wheel as the symbol for Buddhism, which it certainly is. But I always associate the Dharma wheel more so with Hinduism. So I thought that was an interesting choice. I mean, of course, you know, I mean, Buddhism is probably the most famous uh, spin-off religion or uh, philosophy, I guess, of Hinduism. But I still thought that was an interesting choice. I mean, obviously, Christianity is a spin-off as well, right, from Judaism. Oh, yeah, The Witch's Heart. That's a good one. The Mighty Dead is also a very good book. Oh yeah, see? February 3rd, 2025. Uh, the new printing of uh, Gay Witchcraft. Okay, so this book I found out about recently. The Witch's Hut. It is a fiction book. I did not know that he like voyeured into fiction. But I love that. Oh my gosh, is this an updated version of the Mystic Foundation? Shut up. Oh, see, yeah, it is very non-dogmatic. I really highly recommend it. Oh, what a fun new cover. Oh my goodness. Cool. When did that, when did that come out? Oh, I like that. How fun. Man, you guys should really give that book a chance. I'm telling you. It's really good. Um, like, oh man. And it's a big book too. I wonder if it's been changed or updated or added to. Oh, how exciting. Oh, I'm so happy for him. Oh, Isaac Bonewitz. That's another pretty classic author. Starhawk, of course. Come on. Like, and Margot Adler, come on. Wait, is that right, Margot Adler? Yeah, like, come on. Classic, classic, like, truly people who lay the foundation for where we are now in magical society. Raymond Buckland. Let's look at those. I used to have that book, Wicca for One. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I remember that book. Of course, that one and that one. And that one. I remember all those. And that one. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. I remember all these gypsy books. That's crazy. I have these books, actually. It's... That's so wild. Hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Saxon witchcraft. Coin divination. That's fun. That's one of the few, <laughs> that's one of the few divination um, methods that I don't offer on alabamamagic.com. Maybe I'll add that soon. I would have to brush up on it though. I have not even tried to do that in a while. Domino divination, by the way, I just added that like this week as of me recording this. I just added domino divination to the list of divinatory services that I offer you on my website. Which, of course, is linked below. And if you book a session with me, 
um, you will, if you leave a review of that session on my site, you will get a um, coupon code sent to you for a um, another reading for half off. Actually, I might be offering, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> I think I'm actually currently right now, as of this recording, offering a free reading, um, actually, in return for a review. Because it's hard to get people to leave reviews. The Book of African Divination. Interesting. Hmm. Oh, I remember that book, too. Wow. Wow. Man, he really wrote a lot of stuff. Well, we're not finding anything else to purchase, though. I might go ahead and wrap this video up, then. We'll look at one more author. How about that? Mm, might as well look at Scott Cunningham. But I, I'm positive I have every single book. I am a huge Scott Cunningham fan. These are so classic. Come on. Like, truly. Like, if you're teaching the foundations of magic to someone, like, come on. Again, be them a witch or a Wiccan or whatever. I mean, these books just really hit right, you know? That's a great book. It was, re it was uh, released, oh gosh, 10 or plus more years after his death, actually. But it's really good. Do, do, do. Oh, I have that version. This is a like an omnibus of three of his books all in one. It's really nice. Hawaii. Dreams of the Divine. Sacred Sleep. Oh, man. I would actually get a new copy of that because mine's beat up, but it's out of stock. The truth about herb magic. Do, 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 do. That's a new cover. Well, not a new cover. It's probably over a decade old now, that cover. But I have one of an older cover. Hmm. Okay. Well, at least we found some things, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I'm excited. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Woo, woo. Um, plus I have a $2 coupon I can add to this. Um, ooh, and I'm only 61 points for my next free book. Yay. Um, well, anywho, thank you so much for going shopping with me. And, oh, Eileen Holland. And <laughs> until next time, I hope you'll check out the links below. And thank you so much. And goodbye.